Adriana, I am so excited to get a chance to finally speak with you after all this time, uh, after having worked with you. I am super blessed to be able to have witnessed your journey from the moment you started working and all the work you did, because I can't take credit for it. You did a lot of work to make this happen to the life that you have right now, including um, your relationship and, and your family life. So first thing I'd like to say is thank you so much for giving me some time uh, today to talk about uh, your journey with me. No, thank you so much for all the support. And I don't, I don't think my life would have changed without you, that I, I'm 100% sure it wouldn't have changed <laughs> without you. So thank you. Well, let me start by asking you this. Can you tell us a little bit about what you were going through that made you reach out for this kind of help instead of continuing down the path that you were on? Well, I think that it was um, two parallel stories, so to speak, in that like, I think many years I had been dating guys and I had been uh, going for the guys that were unavailable. And I know that this sounds really cliche, but it was like either the asshole or, or a guy that was just never able to commit. Like I remember this guy that I was having a long distance relationship with for a long time. And when I moved to Mexico, he disappeared. And it was like, because for that was my situation. And then on the other side, my family, I had really, and I had, I had a, a, out with them. And um, I had also had a, 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 some problems, some um, health issues. Um, and, um, and I felt at that time that I was 100% alone in Australia. I was, I had this, well, they thought I had like an ectopic pregnancy at the time. And uh, it was a medical emergency. And I remember it being in my room, it was like a couple of days before I first talked to you. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, if I bled to death now, nobody would know. Nobody would ask. It was pretty, um, it was pretty sad and pretty dire. Like it was, breaking point with the the bottom of how lonely i felt hmm. and um i guess that i didn't reach out for help because i wanted a hunt like my goal was to find a boyfriend the help that i needed was to get out of where i was i just needed love in my life in general and to see things differently hmm. and i didn't know what else to do <laughs> so yeah oh. that was situation very different even though this is this was some years ago i remember the first conversation we had and i remember the fear that came up on the conversation. I remember the financial fears, not just the fears of making change. And in the end, even though it was hard, even though you had to really stretch it at that point in your life to do something, what made you say yes versus say, eh, I'm going to take some time. We're not going to do this. What made you finally said, say yes, even though it was hard, even though it was uncomfortable, <laughs> even though it was not cheap. To be honest with you, and I think I told you that at the time, I think I have reached out to psychologists as well, but I don't and still don't believe in psychologists. And I and I didn't think that people understood me. And what and what made me think like it was a feeling, it was a sixth sense, sense to begin with from when I talked to you. But it was also it was also uh, lo my logic was that I, I loved your energy and your vibe, but I also thought this guy knows exactly how I like my situation in that like, he's Mexican like me, but he doesn't live in his own country. So he knows what it feels like to be an outsider. And, and most importantly, he's a man. So you know, I didn't want to talk to a woman. It's just that I think that I had a, a bit of a, a subconscious or conscious uh, underlying fear slash hatred towards men, which you always starts with your father, I suppose, but then all my experiences. So I thought I, I just felt like I needed um, it would help me to to hear it from you, to hear whatever I needed to hear from you. And yeah, I didn't, I did not have one cent at the time. I was really, really poor. And I remember having a conversation with you, and I remember hanging up, and I remember thinking, "Fuck, how am I gonna do it? How am I gonna get this money? How do, I don't. How am I gonna pay for it? Like, let's say I get it from my credit card. How am I gonna pay for it?" And I went, "Fuck, it doesn't matter. I need this. I feel like I need to do this." And I just jumped. <laughs> well, and I put credit like one minute i don't even remember how i paid for it but i remember that i never had to think about it i just i never questioned for one second that it was money well spent like i just definitely changed my life there's no price for that <laughs> let me ask you this Ariana. uh what do you feel were maybe one or two of the biggest mindset shifts or understandings or changes in action 
that allowed you to create a new, write a new love story than the one you're living on? I think that one of them, and I don't know if it was a change, but it was like a, like a, it sunk in the thought and the understanding, the actual understanding that if you don't change your wavelength, mm -hmm. that if you not don't have these feelings from within to like show them to the outside, yeah. you are not to attract that person. My mom puts it in like a more, much simpler words, and she says, "Well, you have to be you have to be a ten out of ten person if you want to attract a ten out of ten person. <laughs> like you can't be a seven and want to get together with a ten. So and, you have a wise mom. <laughs> yeah, she is wise. <laughs> yeah, and um, so I think that was that was one of the things that I realized that this was all to do with." Um, with how you put yourself out there, but really, most importantly, how you feel. Like it's a, I don't know, it's an energy thing. I feel now, and uh, and also understood that there are things that you can that you can work on changing that energy, and that sometimes you just need that help. Mm. That you can't do it on your own. Yeah. And that it's okay. And that there are people like you <laughs> that that know how to help you, mm. and that, that there is, I suppose, the right the the right match with that person that can help you and um yeah i just i understood that there's always you can change uh, you can do to change that mindset even when you're like your darkest the lowest point you just have to want to i suppose you just have to be willing to sure. do the work there was a point in our work together where you had to make a decision regarding a man who was showing up in your life but not at the level that you needed to and, uh, and it was a hard decision because you really love this man. And I remember having conversations with you and almost like sending you a virtual kick in the ass saying, do it. And uh, can you tell me, if you think back of that as a situation, what was the significance of holding on to a high value position versus lowering your standards? What was the significance of that decision in your life? Uh... The significance, I think like when we were working together, I was seeing this man that you're talking about and I hadn't told you about it, not because I was hiding it, but because I thought it was something unimportant. Sure. He had been my, my bestie for many, many years and he had gotten divorced and, and I thought we're both doing a bit of a rebound situation at the moment so we're not really we don't really have a serious relationship and this is never going to go further and i don't want this to go further because this is not my man sure and um that's what i thought i thought and then um and then when i spoke to you when i when i think that it was more in the line of exactly like, i don't deserve this and it, and it wasn't about whether he was that man or wasn't that man uh, and it was obviously a hard decision as you say but i think it was more a i don't this is not what i want mm. this is not like this isn't what we're doing what am i doing with this man is not going to bring me what i need and what i want because whether whether he steps on his game and, uh, and finally you know gets his shit together to to be in a relationship with me whether he wants to or not but i realized i wasn't even asking him to do that yeah. i hadn't I had given myself the value that i should have given myself so how was it how was i going to attract a 10 out of 10 because <laughs> it's not gonna happen so i mm. i um told him and because he was divorced as well i thought he wasn't going to be able to give me what i wanted so i just basically sat him down and i said uh, what do you want and he said, I'm not sure. And I'm like, well, I know that I want uh, a person. I don't not only want someone to love me, but I also want someone that will be excited to uh, share a life with me and get married and have children. Mm -hmm. And if you think, if you feel that you're, or I feel that you already did that and you're not going to feel excited about all of these things and that you probably don't want to jump into someone that wants to see a relationship right now. So I'm going to let you go. I think we should part ways. Good luck. Bye bye. And um, and then he came back about a week later and told me that he was ready to get married and have children and do everything <laughs> with me. And what about it? And I remember, I remember talking to you because at that point I was even a little bit on the side of the too little, too late. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and yeah, we basically um, I I said okay, let's let's give it a go. And fast forward to five years later, um, yeah, we are together and have been very happy together and have a two-year-old. Hmm. Have a song then um, two years old uh, about a couple of weeks ago. Hmm. So uh, very important. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> An important change in your life. Well, tell tell me what's what do you find, what do you admire most in your man? Uh, his love, how loving he is. I didn't see that. Like he is very passionate about um, being a good, everyone being good people, mm-hmm. and um, so he. I don't know. Like he doesn't. Um, I haven't met a man before that doesn't um, put ambition, his professional ambitions and his um, wealth ambitions uh, on top of most things. And I think he's exactly the opposite. He cares a lot more about uh, principles and and people in general. Mm. And he is mostly the most uh, loving father and partner. from affectionate, uh, how affectionate he is, um, to how much he cares uh, about us. So, yeah, that's <laughs> what, what I love about him. What What does it feel like? Because no relationship is perfect, and all relationships have problems and challenges. But how does it feel like overwhelmingly having someone who has your back? Where if you have to go to the hospital, someone definitely gives a shit if you bleed out. Ah, uh, it's funny because. The thinking, the first thing that I did in my mind was exact that mm. that I had absolutely no doubt that he had my back. But by having my back, I mean that we were in this relationship together, and that there was the same way there is no divorcing your parents or your siblings. There is no divorcing. Well, I suppose there are some people that do, but I don't like. I don't know. But but it was we are family, and we are gonna have problems and. Mm. I don't know how we're going to deal with them. I seem like, I know that some people yell at each other. Some people stop talking to each other. It doesn't matter. It just, we don't do that to begin with. But I think that is also part of this uh, underlying understanding that there is not getting off this right. Mm-hmm. Like we don't dislike things about each other. We're going to go through rough patches. But we're going to go through these together. There's no separating. I'm not married to this man and I feel like I am and mm-hmm. I don't have of ever a life partner forth. basically a life partner is more important than a <laughs> husband yeah. i mean and you get you can still have the wedding but life partnership is an inner decision it's a spiritual decision that goes beyond yeah. the label or the piece of paper or the court yeah yeah and that's how i feel i don't uh, i of course i want to get married i don't know if it's because of the party or the meaning but i don't need the paper hmm. i i definitely don't need the paper to know like to just know that he will be that he's not getting off this ride and I am not right. It's like the ultimate commitment. Hmm. That is the, the first thing that I'm 100% sure about. And so, yeah, and he, he does, he feels completely different because he not only has my back when I get sick, he's just, he has my back with, with everything in my life and we are planning our lives together. Hmm. Uh, okay. This is beautiful. What, what, like, a couple more questions for you. What does it mean? To be a mom, to you. I mean, for you right now, something you've wanted for some time. What, what does it mean now for you to be a mom? I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know if you can put it in words. I don't. Mm. I just, um, I just don't want to be like the cliche of the um, moms always saying so rewarding and so it is bloody hard. But I also, I, I agree with the one thing that everyone says, and I just don't think that you can love another human being as much as you love your children to like and um like just caring for this uh little human being and trying to um raise them to be the best person they can be and to be happy i just can't i can't put it in words i don't know it means a lot to me hmm. um yeah i just don't know how to explain it it's, just love. <laughs> it's an love. overwhelming feeling you can't describe it i understand <laughs> yeah yeah Last question that I have for you, Adriana, is um, there's women watching this right now who are on the fence of doing this type of work, who feel 
I want my love story, whether it's marriage or life partnership or just living with someone, but someone who really cares about them, has their back, maybe they want to start family, they have been unsuccessfully trying to do this on their own, reading books, doing yoga classes, and it, that shit hasn't worked. And they're maybe saying, well, maybe this guy can help me, but I'm scared. What would you say to a woman right now who's on the fence of doing this work, but feels like there might be hope for her through putting herself on the line? I would say stop thinking about it and just do it, but do it do it for yourself. Hmm. This is the I think this is the best takeaway that I got from my process with you. I don't think it's easy for me to say I I um to say that I didn't do it for the guy or that I wouldn't I would have been just as happy if I hadn't found the guy straight away because he just said out that the guy was there while I was doing um, my work with you. But, but I think that when we ended our, our um, sessions, I still hadn't made that decision. Like that was my end, the end of our sessions that I told him I didn't, well, what I already said. And, um, and I was completely uh, satisfied anyway, because I felt so much better with, with myself. Mm -hmm. I was. I felt like I was that person that was ready to to um, wait and if not wait. Just find the person that I actually deserved. Yeah. Not anyone. Not just like uh, guys I weren't able to commit. Not just like I. Want, I had the patience because I just knew that I was ready to find the person that I deserved. Yeah. And <laughs> and I. That is what I would say. Do it for yourself. Don't do it for the guy, just do it because you deserve it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Adriana, for this time. Thank you for sharing your insights and your heart. But more than anything, thank you for the example that you are. Thank you for the way you showed up in the work. Thank you for when it was tough, still sticking with this. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing things from your past when we did the work that were so hard to talk about, but helped you to break free and become the 10 that you were hoping to become. And uh, <laughs> Thank you. I really, really appreciate this time that you shared with me and, and I can't wait to see what else comes up in your life in the next few years. Yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much.